So for the data I'm presenting today, I'm just going to go through um, um, basic on fatty acids, um, identify the crayfish that I'll be focusing on, um, provide a little bit of methodology for the lipids and the fatty acid um, analysis, and then compare some of the findings I have so far and um, make some conclusions based on those. So just in general, fatty acids are constituents of lipids. Um, they're comprised of a carboxylic acid with a long hydrocarbon chain. You can see here that's the linoleic acid um, example. So fatty acids are, some fatty acids are required by fish and they have to obtain it via their diet. Um, these are known as essential fatty acids, some of the important ones, um, linoleic and linoleic acids, um, because they're precursors to other fatty acids that are synthesized in fish. And the lack of fatty acids um, can be detrimental to fish if they're really important for survival, growth, reproduction. It's where they get, um, the lipids are where they get most of their metabolized energy. So, um, an example of um, one of these essential fatty acids is treated for omega 3 fatty acids. Um, so, this is based on you are what you eat. Um, there's conservative transfer from prey um, to predator. Um, to the consumer of fatty acids. Um, so they're stored um, in the adipose tissues of predators. Um, when they're released from lipids, they, they remain intact in the dietary fatty acids during digestion. So you can actually, which is why they're useful in uh, assessing dietary studies. And, um, let's see. So fatty acids have been widely used in marine environments. Um, they were used specifically um, for these types of studies, looking at trophic interactions. Um, and the advantage here is it's going to provide you with longer term dietary information or insight into what something's been eating um, over um, a longer time periods so from like four to 12 weeks they found um, from the time of sampling. So it can be used, it's been used, like I said, for um, assessing predator diets, trophic interactions, and making comparisons based on so um, the fatty acid signature is integral to this um, procedure. So the fatty acid signature is basically you detect your fatty acids in the sample, and it's the different concentrations um, that you, you find in each fatty acid. So for what I'm doing, um, it's important that you find a fatty acid signature for individual prey species. For example, um, if you find, I have here, um, you can see the prey species here. The L white, the brown goby, L white, blue, brown goby, and red. Um, so you can see some distinct differences based on the species and the different individual fatty acids there, and all that kind of comprises the fatty acid signature. So if you have that signature based on the degree of um, similarity to something like a lake trout, you can tell um, if the lake trout's consuming more L white or uh, something like brown goby. Uh, that's just an example. So. I'm going to be looking at the lake material food web, like I said. Um, I'm going to be looking at the top predators and the um, major prey species. Um, but just for today, I haven't gotten to the predator aspect yet, so I'm just going to be presenting on um, what I found with the prey species. So, three main ones that I'm going to focus on the owl wife, the rainbow swell, and the rock goby. Um, owl wife and rainbow swell being more open water prey species, whereas um, the rock goby. Species of uh, benthic organism, which is going to provide some interesting uh, things to look at when I have um, my predator data looking at this new energy pathways possibly from near shore to offshore environments. But the objectives for what I have here is was just to determine the lipid content of those three major prey species, um, identify fatty acid signatures um, of L white and rainbow smell, and not brown goby, not because I don't like them. There yet, um, and to compare the fatty acid signatures of the prey species among different sample sites. So, prey sampling um, this data is from the spring 2013. Um, it was done with the, by the USGS, um, their annual prey surveys, um, and it's focused on three, three transects uh, 30 mile point Rochester, um, the 9 mile point transect um, near Oswego. So bottom fish were caught uh, via the bottom trawl. Uh, they were immediately pro 
frozen to prevent oxidation, which could affect fatty acids, um, freeze dried, and um, brought back to the lab where put in the bio freezer, and um, so we can get to them. And then, so prior to like the lipid analysis, take basic weight, length, measurements, sex, and then we grind the fish into a fine paste so that we can have a smaller subsample for the lipid analysis that's representative of a whole fish that uh, we're crazy. So some of the laboratory methods, I won't go into detail. Lipid extraction, basically, they use a chloroform methanol solvent. Um, we determine the percent lipids in each sample uh, gravimetrically. Um, and then from there, to actually separate out the distinct fatty acids, we do a transmethylation, where we add a methyl group on, so it can be um, trans uh, separated out with uh, gas chromatography mesh spectrometry. So that's the TCMS right there. And what you get from it is basically a chromatogram, each peak representing a different fatty acid. And from there, we get our fatty acid signatures. So it's just some of the stats. We, we uh, compared the percent lipids using NOVA for the multivariate stuff. Once you have all your fatty acids and your percents um, of each sample, we use primer um, to create some non metric multi dimensional scaling. Kind of show differences, and we can actually determine the fatty acids that are responsible for these differences or most responsible um, by doing a similarity percentage test. So, to go on just, just the lipids, um, we have that so far for uh, all the spring samples. Um, what we found was um, with the, um, the nine mile point in Rochester um, transects, there wasn't really difference among species significantly, but um, in, at the 30 mile point one, there was a um, statistical significant difference between um, the white having the most lipid content, followed by um, the round goby and the rainbow swell having the least. But you can see that in general, um, on average, that the white had a little bit higher lipid content than the other two species. So if we look at the fatty acid signatures now, and this is a polydimensional plot um, looking at the two species. We get a pretty good grouping here. Um, so these green circles around the outside are contours of this 80% similarity. Um, but if you just look at the species, um, rainbow smelt and blue there, and now white and green, you got you can see that um, the rainbow smelt were we found to be 84, um, about 85% similar to each other with their fatty acid signatures, and now white about 88. Uh, it's 23% difference between fatty acid signatures in those two species. Um, so, like I said, that's what we're looking for for moving forward with the study and looking at post trophic interactions is distinguish between these two species and fatty acid signatures. So, if we do a principal component analysis, this is where we can determine um, discriminating fatty acids, like I talked about before, and the, their, their responsibility. In so we found that this top one here, um, the 22,6 m3, that's DHA. Um, that's one of those omega-3 fatty acids that's pretty important. Um, we've got uh, oleic acid and uh, EPA, which is another one of those um, really bring it out the top of um, fatty acids responsible for the differences uh, between these two species. So just another way to look at that uh, fatty acid, a specific fatty acid scale, you can see here, this is the DHA that I was talking about. You can see our groups with the alewife um, have far less DHA um, than rainbow smell. In general, these bubbles um, are scaled for the concentrations of each fatty acid. So, um, and then the exact opposite is true for um, our oleic acid. So you can kind of see just a plot the differences there in those two. Um, and then if we, if we do look at um, we have so far by, um, by the sample site. Um, you can see the round goby and the blue, the white, blue, the green, or excuse me, the yellow white and the blue, the right, light blue and green. Um, they didn't, they were, they're pretty clustered together um, despite the location. Uh, whereas the rainbow smelt and the red, you can see we have a pretty good grouping for the smelt being collected in Rochester, or that were collected in Rochester um, compared to the smelt that were collected at uh, 30 mile point. And we found there was a statistical uh, significant difference between those two fatty acid signatures, um, which was pretty interesting. 
so just to go over the results again, there were generally higher living content in that life. Um, we found that that statistically significant difference in the fatty acid signatures that um, we were hoping for, um, mostly with the DHA and rainbow smell and the leg acid. some of those conclusions that I have so far. Um, so alloy and rainbow smell at different nutrition values based on their fatty acid signatures for uh, predator species. Um, DHA and EPA that I mentioned before are those uh, um, omega-3 fatty acids that are essential to acquire the diet. Um, so that can play a role even though their lipid content seems to be a bit less. Um, overall, they might be providing more um, suitable fatty acids for and that location does play a role in the fatty acid composition of rainbow smell. And it'll be interesting to see um, how that plays a role in predator diets and what they're eating. So, like I said, this is just uh, some preliminary data for my study. Um, some additional components of the prey portion. Um, I plan to analyze the, the difference in near shore and offshore prey, so prey that were caught um, in the near shore environment and offshore to see if there's a difference in diets. Um, see if that alters their fatty acid signature and make some connections once we have our um, great data or better data. And then in addition to the spring sampling that I talked about here, I also have a uh, fall season that we'll be looking at compare. Um, so like I said, we basically would want to try to make the fatty acid signatures that we're developing here are important um, to for this for this trophic interaction that um, I plan to be studying. Um, so when I sampled my predators from all on the south shore of uh, Lake Ontario. Like I said, um, those fatty acids that they consume for their diet are stored in those adipose tissues and that belly flap that you see a picture of there is a good representation of um, the fatty acids that they're obtaining through their diet. So we can sample those and really see what they're eating. Um, so I just want to thank the USGS for sampling efforts. Uh, laboratory assistance, uh, grants that help me 